I'm looking here. Okay, we're live. Type in, type in and let, he, let us know if you're there. We kind of got to, we're trying some new cameras. So you'll have to tell us whether you like it, whether you can see us just as well. Mr. Joey's got to look in different places. <laughs> I've got to talk in different places. Mr. Mark still has the same old thing he gets to do on the computer. So let us know if you're there. Type in a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Tell us who's out there. We're going to paint today. I'm so excited. I love to paint. So that little canvas that was in your activity bag, we're going to use it today. We're going to use our acrylic paints. So you might want to put like some newspaper down on the table you're going to work on today. So if you get painting near the edges, we don't want paint on the table. <clears throat> so let me know if anybody's there. Has anybody signed on? Hello, hello. Is Sophia there? Is Casey there? Just getting pulled up now. Oh. Cora and Sunny. Cora and Sunny are there. Hi, Cora. Your sister's there. Hi, Deb. We're painting today. I'm making a giraffe. I get to make my favorite animal today. This is my all-time favorite animal. I love giraffes. See my giraffe? So we're going to make a giraffe today. We're going to paint. So if you've got good clothes on, uh, you want to make sure you're covered up. If paint gets on you, when the paint's dry, it does not wash out of it's your clothes. To nobody. So there's eight people on. Well, there were only four. Five, okay, six, there. Joey, Joey's checking who's on for me. Cora and Sunny are there, so Cora and Sunny, um, Deb, make sure you put some newspaper down on the table so your canvas can go on top of that. We don't want to get paint on the table. You don't want to get paint on your clothes. So put a big shirt over or put an apron on or put a big bib on or something. You don't want to get paint on your clothes today. We're going to paint a giraffe today because it's my favorite animal. So we're going to need to cover the table and then all your other supplies should be in your activity bag. You should have a little canvas. This is our it's canvas. On. Hey Nick, we're gonna paint today. We're Maybe painting my favorite animal there. here. Um, so grab your canvas out of your bag, cover up the table surface, put some newspaper down. Uh, you're gonna need your canvas. Uh, grab yourself a styrofoam plate. You might, did we, I think we put in multiple plates. You might need two of them. We're gonna paint our background first, and then we'll paint our giraffe. We're actually gonna draw the giraffe first. You should have five pots of paint that all have a big letter A on them like this. So you're gonna want your white. You should have white and black, and then you should have red, yellow, and blue. Red, yellow, and blue. We're gonna get our color wheel out today. You should have red, yellow, and blue, plus our black and white, okay? So we're gonna use our primary colors today. We're gonna create all these colors on this giraffe out of our red, blue, and yellow. So we're gonna really use the color wheel today and think about how we make colors with just the primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. We're gonna use a little bit of white. So our color wheel is going to be important today. We're gonna to learn how the three primary colors make all kinds of these secondary colors, but when you put the three primary colors together, you get shades of brown, depending on how much you put of each color. So we're gonna learn a little bit about that while we mix our paint. So grab yourself a styrofoam plate. You might get out too if you think you're going to get really messy painting your blue sky behind. You should find your five pots of paint that have a big A on them. You should have white and black and red, blue, and yellow. These are the pots of paint that have a lot of paint in them. See how much paint I've got in this pot? Like way more than your watercolor pots were, okay? So these are the pots that have a lot of paint in them. And they all have a capital A. If Joey got them on all the pots. I think we had capital A's on all your acrylic pots. So we don't want to use our watercolor today. We want to use our pots of paint our acrylic paint. You're gonna need a container with some water in it. So go find yourself a cup and get some water. And then you want this round brush. We're gonna paint the whole thing with this round brush that was in your activity bag. So you guys 
Like Nick, this was, I think, in the very first week we did this, which was way, 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 way back a long time ago in March. But go find your round brush. We're gonna use this round brush for everything. We can even paint the background with it because we're gonna draw our giraffe first. We're gonna draw and plot him on here and then we're gonna paint the background around him. Get that dry and then we'll paint the giraffe. So you need your cup of water from somewhere at the kitchen. Cover the table you're working on with some newspaper. Get out your paint, your brush, your styrofoam plate. Get yourself a couple paper towels because we always need to dab our brush a little sometimes. And sometimes with this, we're actually gonna water down our paint so we see a little of the color show through. So you're gonna need a paper towel, maybe get yourself a couple paper towels. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the other thing we're gonna need that's in your house is a hair dryer. So find your hair dryer. If you don't have a hair dryer, <laughs> way better for having a lot. Um, You'll be okay if you don't have a hair dryer. A hair dryer makes life a lot easier. Once we paint our background here blue, we will dry that blue and then it'll make it easier for our giraffe not to turn green. Let's look at the color wheel for a minute. If we paint our background blue, here's my blue. This is my primary color blue. And then I go to paint my giraffe and my blue paint's all wet near the edge of the giraffe. When I paint my giraffe, which is mostly yellow when we first start, if the yellow gets mixed with the blue sky, what color is my giraffe going to be? My giraffe's going to turn green. That's why it will be good to find a hair dryer. So go see if you can find a hair dryer. We don't want our giraffe to look green in the background. Uh, we're actually going to make the green of our leaves. I caught my giraffe in my picture eating. So we're going to use um, our blue and our yellow at the end to mix a little bit of green and give him something to eat. We're going to get our brown tone here by mixing the yellow and the red and the blue. But we use it in different proportions. You can get all kinds of shades of brown. Some brown looks very dark, almost like black, a real dark. When you think of eating candy, they make milk chocolate candy which is a lighter brown, and they make dark chocolate candy. Dark chocolate, you know how that brown color is a lot darker than milk chocolate candy? That's because there's different proportions of pigment or color in it. So we're gonna use a lot of yellow and very little blue and very little red to make our brown tones. So if you're about ready, I wanna give everybody time, have you gotten your cup of water? You got some newspaper down on the table that we can put our canvas on top of. You need some paper towels and find your hair dryer. Other than that, we're gonna get our paints out. Oh, get your pencil. We're gonna draw our giraffe on first with pencil. So you might want your pencil and your eraser. We're gonna we're gonna draw very lightly. So you don't need to erase your lines too much. I've got my Sharpie out for at the very, very end that we could almost use the Sharpie if you'd like instead of trying to paint. One thing giraffes are known for is their eyelashes. Giraffes have really long eyelashes, whether they're male or female, they have really long eyelashes. The Sharpie will work just perfect to put eyelashes on if that's easier at the end. So you might use your Sharpie, you might not. Okay, are we about ready? I think Mr. Joey is going to pull the camera in. Has everybody found all their supplies? I'll give you guys a few minutes. And let Miss Jenny get turned around here. I'm going to put her color wheel up here because we're going to refer to the color wheel a lot. Got to let Mr. Joey get situated. zoom in from back there. Okay, you'll have to let us know what you think of our new camera today. I'm going to put our little giraffe right here. Oh no, I have to lay him down, don't I, Joey? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let Miss Jenny get situated here so you'll be able to see everything. I'll put my paints up here at the top. We'll move our bag over. Okay, I want my red, blue, and yellow to mix some colors. This is my palette here. Here's what we're going to paint. First, we're going to draw him. So I can go ahead. I'm going to put my paintbrush in my water since that's where it's going to end up. And we're going to look at how to draw our giraffe first. Okay. So let me put my palette out of the way here. And put it up there. Now, what I want you to do first, giraffes have a very distinctive shape to their head. They have this very wide, big mouth flap. It always kind of identifies a giraffe. Instead of like a horse, their mouth kind of juts out like a big flap at the end. They have very big ears for their head. They have these little horns on the top of their head. And they have big giant eyes with those long eyelashes and their eyes sit way over here on the side of their head. Sort of like if you were with us when we drew the ostrich, Ollie the ostrich the other, last week. Their eye, the ostrich's eyes we drew way on the side of their head. The giraffe's eyes are kind of the same way. They're spaced very far apart, okay? So what I want you to do to be able to get your giraffe on here, if you notice, his horns almost touch the top of the canvas and his mouth comes almost all the way to the bottom. So we wanna get this giraffe's big head in here. And so what I want you to do is find the middle of your canvas. Here's the middle of my canvas. Do you see where it's gonna go on my giraffe's head? Little more than half of his head's above it and little less than half is below it. So give yourself a very light line. I'm gonna press a little darker so you can see my lines, but I'm gonna give myself a little dotted line that makes the middle of my canvas here. Can we see it, Joey? Okay. That's gonna give me a guideline so I kinda of know how to draw my giraffe in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is look at this shape. I'm going to kind of break his head into two shapes. He's got this kind of curved V or, or U shape to most of his head. And then he gets this mouth that hangs off the bottom. Then he gets a little bit of a curve to the top of his head and he gets his horns. So I'm going to give myself two more guidelines on here. You found your center line here. Just kind of give yourself a line in the middle there. I want you to look at that center line and look at the top of the canvas and give yourself a little dot halfway between there. Okay, give yourself a little dot right there. And then I want you to do the same thing on the bottom. Here's the center line. And I want you to give yourself a dot halfway between the center line and the bottom. Joey, will you go grab that piece of paper that I drew on top on the pile over here? I'm going to put a little dot right there. So I got a dot that divides me halfway to the top, and I got a dot that divides me halfway to the bottom. Okay? These are just going to be a couple guidelines for while we draw. Okay? Have you got your two dots on there? We're going to make this big U shape. We're going to make this big U shape for his head. That is this shape. See the sides of his head? Imagine his head comes right underneath his nostrils there, right through his big mouth, and curves up this other side. So it's kind of like a U. So I want you, and we're going to draw the top of the U, the sides of the U are going to come up to where we made this dot here. So look at this. We're going to make a big old U. It's going to come down. The bottom of this U is not going to be quite as wide as you'd think of as a U because my sides are going to slant a little. They're going to have a little diagonal instead of straight up and down. Get a little flat, a little bit of a bottom to your U there. And then come up this other side. So we want a U about like this. My sides are going to come up to where I made my dot here. In the bottom of my U is where I made my other dot. Okay. So get your, get your U on there. It's a little wider at the bottom than a V. 
not quite it and but the sides are gonna slant a little bit instead of going straight up and down like a U they're gonna slant a little bit okay so if you got a U on there this is gonna be this part of our giraffe from here underneath his mouth and up to this side so we're just above his eyes here okay now the top of his head we're going to give ourselves we're going to connect these two sides with just a little bit of a curve kind of like we're making kind of like we're seeing a half circle not really too round we're going to connect from this point of his head over to this point with a curve up so it looks like we're making a frown even though that's my favorite animal for the minute it looks like we're frowning at him okay so give yourself a frown here to connect your two sides doesn't look too much like a giraffe yet does it but we're going to transform it a little bit before we do anything more with the top of his head we're going to come add this mouth down here now it's kind of like a circle shape, but it's like a cross between a circle and a diamond. If I was making a diamond shape, it would look like this, right? Let's look at this mouth. See how it slants on the sides, curves and slants in? So a diamond shape is like this, right? Now, does his mouth look like that? No, because it's curved, but a a U shape would be like this. So he's kind of like a U cross between a U and a diamond because the top of his mouth slants in a little bit. Okay? So we're going to come a little above. Remember how we made the bottom of our U here where you made your dot? We're going to come just a little above. We're going to give a little diagonal on this side and a little diagonal on that side. Okay. These are these two sides of his mouth. Okay, so little diagonal here, little diagonal here. Then we're going to connect them with a big curve. Just like we're making a bottom of a cup, the bottom of a bowl. Okay, that's going to be our giraffe's mouth hanging down. It gets not to a point, but it does curve in like this. Then we can erase this extra line we made in here when we first drew his head. Okay, so now we got our giraffe's head and his mouth hanging off. We kind of need to do a little changing with his head here. On the top of his head we're going to put two horns. They don't go exactly perfectly straight up because they taper in just a little bit. That means they get a little skinnier as they go up to the top of the horns. They're pretty close together. See the gap between the horns? And they're right here in the center of his head. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a line that gets a little closer as it comes up. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of space. This should be right in the middle of our giraffe's head. A little space should be right in the middle of his head. That's about the middle of his head. So on this side, I'm going to put two lines over here. My lines don't quite go straight up and down. See how they look compared to my straight up and down pencil? So they curve in just a little bit. They're pretty thick still at the top, but they curve just a little bit. And then we're just going to, you can put like a upside down U on top of them. The top of their horns are kind of brushy, kind of furry. So they'll get a little hairy and furry on the top. Okay, so those are my giraffe's horns. Now, the giraffe's head is kind of this shape if we look for a shape, but it doesn't exactly make a point here and make a curve like this. So we do want to change his head just a little bit. So here's the top where we put the horns. We can leave that as a nice curve. But what we're going to do is kind of cut off this sharp corner we made See how we came up and we made a corner like this? We're going to cut that off a little bit. Right before the corner, I'm going to curve in just a little bit and come back up. So I'm going to curve in just a little bit and come back up. So let's just cut off those corners there.
curve in and then turn back and go up. Curve in just a little bit and go back up. So it's almost like we made just a little hill going up instead of this corner over here. Have you got that on there? I'm going to let Mr. Joey check on our computer or see. Oh, nope, here comes Mr. Mark. Okay, so all we did was cut this corner off, made it kind of more like a sloping hill, but it's a pretty steep hill. It's going to go up here. We want to be up to the top of the head before the horns. Okay. Anyway, can you erase this sharp corner off? We'll erase this sharp corner off. And he's starting to look a little bit more like a giraffe, isn't he? Now, here's my curved top of my head. Here's my center line. We still got our center line on here. We're going to put his eyeballs kind of in the middle. See where, where our sides come up, where we just slope them in? This is where we're going to put his eyeballs. And what we want to do is draw ourselves just a horizontal line. This is his top eyelid. We kind of want them across from each other. Try to make them match up across from each other. That's going to be our giraffe's top eyelid. And then to make his eyeball, we're going to come down and curve out like this. So come down, kind of make them the same size. Come down and curve out here to the edge. So we got our giraffe's eyes on the side. He looks a little strange, but he'll start looking a little better as we paint him. Okay. What's the giraffe missing? Two things he's missing. Well, three. We need to give him nostrils down here. See where his nostrils end up? Not at this wide point, but just, just above. And they're like a like a very vertical little oval. Put a curve like this, and on the other side it's going to curve the other way. And then put a little bit of an oval inside there. Okay. So we got nostrils. Mine might be a little close together. What else is he missing? He's missing his neck. So remember our little guideline, the middle of our canvas here? We want his neck to come from there, and it's going to go angling off the paper, off the canvas, right about even with where his nostrils, just below where his nostrils were. So this is the top of his neck over here. And the bottom of his neck, it's going to be a little skinnier at the top here than it is down here. It's going to come from right below this curve on his mouth. So come down on his mouth a little bit and make a curve go that way. So our giraffe has his neck. He has his nose. He's got his eyes. He's got his horns. What else is he missing? He's missing his ears. Yeah, those nice big old ears. I'm going to go in here and erase these extra lines I got because we don't need more lines on here. So I'm going to erase all these little extra lines, all my little guidelines I gave myself. Yeah, let's move my nostril a little bit. Mr. Joey, it's bugging Mr. Joey. This one okay, Mr. Joey? Mm -hmm. This one, he says, got too close to the middle. So we'll move it over a little bit. That looks like a better spot, right? There we go. Okay. So we have to add his ears. Look at where my giraffe's ears go. They come in right above his eyes. Not down here at his eyes, just above. And they come up here near his horn. So I'm going to go a little bit above. His ears are like a big teardrop shape. So I'm going to go above his eye here. And I'm going to make a big curve out like this. My ear's almost going to go right off. I'm going to make a big curve over here. And it will come to a point right up here at my corner. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Above the eye. Make a curve like this. And then up here near the horns, I'm going to leave about the same amount of space. Come out to a big point there. So my giraffe's now got his big old ears. This ear looks a little, a little big, doesn't it? Let's bring that ear in just a little bit. So this is a good time to do all the plastic surgery you need to. Make sure your ears kind of match up. 
Um, we can change around our giraffe just a little bit. Oops, my canvas was sliding off. I'm going to make my head come up just a little bit above the eye, come up almost like a vertical and then curve in. Okay. That'll help the shape of his head just a little bit. Anything else we need to do to adjust? We might bring his, give his little curve to his cheek here a little bit. Okay, I think my giraffe's looking pretty good. How's yours looking? You ready to do some painting? I'm gonna show you a really fun way we're gonna make a sky here. Got him on? Now, we gotta think he looks a little funny in here, doesn't he? Because giraffes have this tall forehead that pokes out. So if we think of putting that in like this, you know, if we think of this nice big lump on the top of their forehead we're gonna make, and we're gonna make this nice brown stripe that's gonna come down in the middle, and we're gonna give him eyelids around here. All of a sudden, he's not gonna look so funny. Okay, but we just need our outline right now. So you ready to do a background? Here's what we're gonna do to make our background. We want it to look like it's just a nice, pretty blue sky. So we're going to start with a blue on our brush, but just a tiniest little bit of blue. Let me show you how much blue we're gonna use. I'm gonna get my palette here. and we're gonna get our blue out first. Oh, thank you. This is my blue. I'm gonna take my brush, put your brush down in the water, tap it off. Can we see, or do I need to move my water? Okay. I'm gonna tap it off on the side a little bit, pat it dry on my paper towel. I have my paper towel laying right here on my table, okay? Now, I want to scoop just a little bit of blue. I don't need any more than that right now. So use your, use your brush like a little shovel. Scoop some blue out. Put it down here. Turn your brush like this and let scoop all that blue off onto our palette. And put my blue back over there. We're going to start with just some straight blue. So put a little bit on your brush. And I'm gonna start, do you notice how my sky on here is pretty much when you first glance at it, you say, oh, it's a plain blue background. But there's lots of different shades of blue, aren't there? Just like when you look up in the sky, some parts of the sky look darker blue, some are lighter. <clears throat> We're gonna see lots of shades of blue in our sky here. I started with my blue in this top corner on this one. So you can start anywhere you want. Start in a corner. How about if we start down here with our blue? So I'm going to dip my brush, but this is all the blue. I'm only going to paint this much blue on to start. Okay. So dip your brush in that blue. We don't want to see any of the white canvas showing through. You want to use enough blue. Okay. When you got that much blue, swish your brush, swish the blue off your brush and your rinse water. We're going to paint kind of quickly. When we've got one wet color on, this is called painting wet on wet. Pat your brush dry on your paper towel. Now that your brush is clean, see how clean my brush is? We're gonna dip it in the white. And I'm gonna scoop a bunch of white out onto my palette. I'm scooping it out because we're not gonna use all this white right now for the background. And I want my white to stay clean. So I don't want to be dipping my blue brush into the white. So I'm going to put my white back over there. I'm going to take the white on my brush, get yourself a nice blob of white on the brush, and I'm going to paint it right into this blue. I'm going to crisscross, zip around. It doesn't matter which direction we're going. We're going to smooth it out after we get it on here. And I'm going to peek. I'm not going to dip my brush in the blue anymore. I'm just going to keep picking up white I'm gonna start with a white out here at the edge of the blue. I'm gonna paint it into the blue. 
I can paint the sides of my canvas. Pick up a little bit more white, start out here at the edge. I'm gonna paint right up to the edge of my giraffe. Now what I'd like you to do, I know it's sometimes it's scary to get right to the edge, but you don't wanna leave the canvas showing. It's okay if we paint a little bit over the edge of the giraffe because when we're painting the giraffe, we can go back over this sky and cover it up. So if you get a little bit of sky on the edge of your giraffe, it's okay. I'm still continuing to only pick up white paint. I've got so much blue on my brush that it doesn't matter. I don't have to pick up any more blue. I just want to pick up white paint. I am kind of smoothing my sky out so it doesn't look like I was in the middle of a storm here. And I'm going to keep adding white. I'm going to go all the way around my giraffe here. I'm just going to follow my pencil line paint right up. I'm painting over the edge of the pencil line there. And I'm going to come in here and kind of smooth my white out a little bit. I don't want the sky to look like it was painted around my giraffe. So see how a little bit, it, I'm going over the edge a little bit. I just want it to look like the sky goes behind my giraffe. Okay, so I'm going to pick up more white. Still haven't picked up any more blue. This is all coming from the blue on my brush, but I'm gonna go right up here around my ear on my canvas. If you wanna paint the sides of your canvas so it looks nice when you hang it on the wall, you can do that now. You can turn the canvas on its side and paint the edges here. This would be the time to paint your edges because you kind of want your edges to look like your painting just wrapped itself right around the corner. So you kind of need to do it when you got that color going. Okay, so I got this side painted over here. Let's see if I can get the rest of it. And I'm gonna move right around and paint at the top of my canvas. I'm gonna turn my canvas a little bit. Whoops, there we go. So I can reach a little better. Mr. Joey's helping get me situated here. Okay. And got my sky got a little dark right there, so I'm going to add a little bit more white. As long as the paint is still wet on your canvas, it's very easy to blend the colors right on your canvas. Makes it more interesting than if you mix the color on your plate. If you mix it on your plate, put it on your canvas, and you only have one shade. And look at all these cool shades in the sky that I've got. That's from the paint mixing wet on wet right on the canvas. So I'm still just picking up white out of my puddle of white. I'm gonna paint right around his ear here and brush it out a little bit. I've got my canvas turned upside down now to you guys. I'm gonna paint right around his horns. You can see how my white paint on my palette's getting a little bit of blue in it from where my brush dips in. But this is good. It's giving me just a little bit of blue in the sky. So I'm going to paint right up to the edges. Remember, we don't want any canvas showing. So if you get a little bit over your pencil lines, that's okay. We can fix it when we're painting. Because see, I just painted right over the top of his horn. But my brown and yellow will cover up the blue when I get there. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more white. Paint over here over the top of this ear. Some of my sky's almost absolutely white. I did, we gotta come back down here. Joey wants to make sure I don't forget there. And you know what? Mr. Joey had a good idea. Let me finish right around here because when the paint starts to dry, which this might be, oh, it's still a little wet, see my finger? If the paint starts to dry, it's not as easy to blend your color in. So if you leave off any spot, make sure you go in and blend. I'm gonna dip the tip of my bristles in the water just cause this paint's a little dry down here. I'm gonna paint right through like that. There we go. Now I got it all blended in. And come up here under his chin. We'll pick up a little bit more white. 
Now, I've painted over the edge of my pencil line, but I can still tell where we're going to go. Remember how we drew this? We know that his mouth's going to come right around there. We can remember the shape when we start painting. I'll help you remember the shape we want. I'm going to come up here and get this side filled in over here. And don't forget if you want to paint your edges, do that while you're painting on the canvas here. I just keep picking up white. I've never gone back to that blue puddle over there. I'm going to use some of that blue puddle when we make our brown shades. But I don't need to use any more blue. I want my background to be kind of light so my giraffe stands out. I could have made it like nighttime. Maybe giraffes go out to eat at night. So it could have been night. If your sky is darker than mine, that's okay. We could have all kinds of different shades of blue going here. This seems a little dark over here compared to all the rest of my sky. So I dipped the tip of my bristles in, picked up a little bit more white. I'm going to come over here and see if I can't lighten this up a little bit. This is just personal preference. Your sky can be whatever shades of blue you would like. If you think it looks nice, really dark, you can have a dark sky. If it's too dark in some places, dip the tip of your bristles in the water, pick up a little bit more white, and blend some white into your blue. As you get, so we're all covered. Double check, make sure you painted between his horns. Make sure if you want your sides painted, you go do that right now. So I'm gonna get the rest of my sides painted. And how are we doing? Give me a thumbs up if your sky is just about done. You paint, because I'm painting really kind of fast here. Are you guys painting just as fast as me? Now I'm going to make it look like his neck runs right off the page, which means I wouldn't, I'm going to leave some white there for his neck. See how it would make it look like his neck was going right off my page here. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Paint on the end here. So it looks like his neck's running right off that corner. Let's see, did I get all this side painted? Oops, I didn't. I didn't go up to the top, did I? So I'm going to get the top done up here. this painted in. See if I can get it filled in real quick. So can you guess what we're going to do next? We're going to get the hair dryer out really quick here. Okay, Mr. Joey's going to bring my hair dryer over. As soon as you've got sky on here, I want you to, and part of my sky is already starting to dry. So, what I want you to do is take your hair dryer Put the hair dryer on high or hot, whatever your setting is, and it should dry this really fast. And you know what? You can hold the corner here where his neck goes off. There's no paint right there. So it gives you a good place to hold on to it. So Mr. Joey's going to get my hair dryer. Um, you need an extension cord, Mr. Joey? There's one over on the grill. Okay, I got my hair dryer, so I'm going to turn on my hair dryer. It might be a little loud for a minute. I'm going to put giraffe down. i got to go underneath my cords here. We have a lot of cords in the studio while we're doing stuff. Okay, so I'm going to use the hair dryer for a minute. Get my sky blue, my blue sky dry. all it took to get my giraffe dry. So, I got a sky here. 
I'm going to make this nice creamy, very pale yellowish, orangish, creamy color for my giraffe. So I gotta make sure all this blue's off my brush. If I start scooping out my creamy color and there's blue on my brush, my giraffe's gonna turn what color? Blue and yellow. I'll have a green giraffe. So I washed my brush off really, really good. And I don't want to use this puddle of white because it's got blue in it. So I'm going to take some white. I'm going to scoop myself a clean puddle of white. I made three scoops there because I'm thinking I'm going to use a lot of white. And then I'm going to scoop a little bit of my yellow. I'm going to scoop from one side of my yellow here because I've got some white on my brush. White's not going to bother my yellow. It would just make a little lighter yellow. But I'm going to scoop like four scoops of yellow. See all my yellow? And then I need just, I've got blue on my palette already, remember? We scooped some blue to make our sky and we're not going to use much blue. And we're not going to use much red. So I'm going to wash the yellow off my brush. Okay, make sure you when you wash it off, pat it dry on your paper towel. You can look at your paper towel when you pat it dry. When I say pat it dry, I put my brush down. I put my brush down like this, and I roll my brush back and forth and drag it across the paper towel then I can tell if I've got all the paint off because if no paint shows up on your paper towel, you're good. Now, I don't need much red, so I'm going to make like one big scoop of red like this. I'm going to put it over here. Okay. Then I want to wash all that red off my brush. And again, pat it dry by laying it down. Oops, I still got red on my brush. Rinse it again. Lay it down on the paper towel and roll your brush back and forth, okay? You want to make sure you don't leave any water on this part of the brush because that's where it can drip. Okay, now I'm going back to my big puddle of yellow I made here, right? I'm going to scoop a big scoop of it and put it in the middle here. And then I'm going to take my brush... <clears throat> And I'm going to take just a little pinpoint of red. I'm just putting the little tip of my brush in the red. I don't want any more red than that. See that little amount of red and all that yellow? And it's going to turn it into an orangey color. That's pretty dark orange. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to scoop another big scoop of yellow. I want to lighten that up. There we go. And I'm going to come over here and scoop a little bit of white. We're going to make it even a lighter color. Now when I add a lighter color, I'm trying to lighten it up. So when I scooped my yellow, I didn't need to put it all over. I just need to lighten up part of it. When I scoop my white, I'm going to put it at the end of the puddle here. I'm going to lighten up this part. Okay. This is going to give me a nice kind of creamy, orangey, whitish look. We're going to paint the the base of the giraffe, all this color. Okay, I could add a little bit more yellow, I think. There we go. I like that. That's a little creamier. Also got just a little darker, so I'm going to scoop a little bit more white. This is fun. This is this is using all our resources here. So look at where we started. You can see my really dark red and orange we made first. Then we added more yellow to it. Then we added some white to it. Then I put some more yellow back into it. And this is going to give me this nice creamy color. I'm going to paint this whole giraffe this color. Right down his nose here. Right up the middle. Now sometimes, see with my brush, I get these streaks of some of the other color that's in there. That's okay. Makes him look pretty cool. So we're going to paint him all this color.
can when I get down to his mouth remember how my blue sky got over the edges but I can still tell where my pencil line would be I want the pencil line to come out here so I'm going to paint right out to the edges if you see a little of your blue shining through like that kind of make us a little shadow there that's okay we can come back and give it a second coat I don't want the bottom of his mouth to be pointy so round it out there and I think the side of his mouth could come up over here now I've scooped just about all my puddle uh oh I've scooped all the puddle I mixed see how you can kind of see my blue showing through but that's okay because we're gonna add a couple more layers of color now I scooped up all my color here so all I do is go back and get some of the colors I used I need a little bit of yellow in there a little bit more white in there mix it in I can pull a little of this orangey color into it there we go now I got another puddle of color going so I'm gonna come up this other side of his mouth over here I'm gonna come up the side of his face went right up here when you get a lot of paint on your brush like this it's easy to lay it down and kind of push all that paint right along your line you want to make and it makes a nice even solid line for you I'm gonna leave his eyeballs because I'm gonna paint those black so I'm gonna paint around his eyeball there Now my colors don't exactly match that I mixed up, do they? But that's okay. It kind of makes him look a little more natural to have some different shades in his fur. Okay, so I'm gonna come up this other side over here. Come right up under his eyeball. Go right around his eyeball. And my yellow giraffe is starting to take shape. I've got to scoop a little bit more white, pull a little bit more of that orange into my puddle here, add a little bit more yellow to it. I've got to keep mixing up my color there. Remember, this is some of this orange. Add more yellow and add more white. Okay. So if you run out of your puddle there, we just mix a little bit more. Come up the hill across the top of his head there. This came up the hill like that. His ears can be, get the same color and they get this nice scoop to them. This nice curve out like that. And we're going to do some wet on wet painting into this giraffe in just a minute. I'm going to scoop this side out. I want to make kind of a point at the end it's kind of the points kind of got a little curve doesn't come out to a really sharp point and then let's put this ear on scoop enough paint on your brush and you can follow right along your pencil lines and make a nice solid line got to scoop some more color I've run out of yellow so I'm going to take my brush over here and scoop some more yellow onto my plate Okay, I've still got some orange going. Remember, we're going to add more yellow to that orange and then add some more white to it. That's how we're making our creamy color. So I've got to come up here on his ear and make the top of his ear. There we go. Let it come out here to a point. Stoony's got to pick it up so I can make the edge of it. There we go. Whoops. Oh, come on ear. There we go. My ear goes off the side of the page. And we want to paint his neck this nice creamy color. I'm going to add a little bit more white. It looks a little dark. There we go. And his neck came up here to his mouth right about there. Scoop a little bit more and get the top of his neck here. I still can't paint that far across from me. I need a little bit more of my white. I'm going to 
gonna scoop some more white out on my palette here. Put a little bit more white into my color here. Maybe add a little yellow because I'm getting all this orange in it. And add a little bit more white. I'm getting all kinds of shades of this creamy color, which is cool. My giraffe's gonna have a lot of shades on him. Okay, got the rest of his neck painted here. Now, while this is wet, I want to come in with a little bit of my white. I'm just going to pick up some plain old white. I'm going to paint a little bit. I want the, this is like where his nose comes down. You know how your nose sticks out farther from your face than the rest of your face? So it usually gets more light on it. If you're ever outside in the sun, your nose gets sunburned before the rest of your face. That's because it sticks out farther. So we're going to put a little white right down the middle of this guy's head so it makes like the bridge of his nose stand out from the rest of his face. The other place that I may make it a little lighter is here on the top of his neck. So I picked up some straight white. Let's put a little white right into the top of his neck. Let's see, Mr. Joey says, when I'm painting from the side, I'm getting crooked, I am. My highlight's going this way, so let Miss Jenny hold. Sometimes if, you gotta remember, I'm painting from the side, so things get a little wonky. There we go. That's a little better. There we go. Okay, now the other place I might put a little white is on the tip of his ears up here. I'm gonna lighten up just the top of his ears a little bit. It's just like when you look at a cat and like the middle of the ear gets a little darker. So we're gonna make the top of the ear a little bit lighter on my giraffe. Okay, any place else you think we ought to lighten up my giraffe? We can lighten up on either side of his nostril here. We're gonna put some dark in his nostrils. Remember how we needed to get a second coat down here for those kind of centered, Joey? Okay, this is a good time to get that second coat down here where our blue was showing through a little bit. I'm going to put an extra coat down there. There we go. Okay, how are we looking? Good base coat for our giraffe here? Okay. Kind of taking shape. I'm going to rinse my brush out and we're going to change our creamy color to a little bit of a brown tone. Now, I'm going to bring just a little bit of my darker orange here. Remember how I had this puddle and we kept making it lighter and lighter? I'm going to use a little bit of this darker orange. And I'm going to come in, get just a little bit of shadow in here. I'm going to blend it right into that light I had. But I want right down here at the bottom of his face where his mouth sticks out to get a little bit of shadow to it. So I just picked up some of this deeper orange that I had and put the white and the yellow in. I'm going to follow that line we made with our mouths. Remember how the line of our mouths came up like this? I'm going to get just a little bit of shadow down there on my giraffe. Just helps kind of look. I don't really want to have a line. I want it to be really subtle. But it gives just a little bit of shape to my giraffe. See how that gives him a little bit of shape? I better turn it and look to make sure my giraffe isn't lopsided. Okay. We're going to, I'm going to put a little of this shadow in the middle of my ears too. Take a little of that deeper orange color you got. And let's put a little shadow right in his ears here. Right from where his head started. And I'm going to go right up in the middle of his ears. These are really subtle shadows. They don't show up too dark. 
We're going to actually mix up brown here in just a second, and we're going to put some brown shadow on. It's going to show up more. But we got a little shadow in his ears. Let Miss Jenny turn this so I can see a little bit better. And we're going to get just a little brush that in just a little bit. Okay, so I brushed this in just a little bit. So I got that kind of look of his nose coming up onto his face there. Okay, so we got some subtle shadows there. Uh-oh, I forgot to paint his horns. So I washed all that brush off, all that color off. And we're going to make this darker brown color. And I'm just going to paint his horns with that darker brown color. So, do you still have your puddle here in the middle where we first mixed orange? We mixed orange by doing yellow and red makes orange, right? Look at my color wheel. Yellow and red makes orange. So, if we want to make brown, all three primary colors make brown. So, I've got my orange puddle here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So, I'm going to scoop some yellow again and put some yellow down here in my puddle. And remember, we just took a pinpoint of red, just that much red. See the little tiny bit of red on my brush? I'm going to mix that in to make my orange color. And I want to use even less, even less paint on my brush for the blue. So I'm rinsing all this color off my brush. I swished it around in my rinse water, pat it dry, roll it onto your paper towel. And I'm going to pick up just the tiniest itty bitty tip of blue paint on my brush. I can always add more. Okay, ready? We're going to put a little blue in there. It's going to turn it green. Look at that little tiny bit of blue. That's all it took and it kind of looks green, doesn't it? So I got kind of this greenish orange tinge. I'm going to pick up one more pinpoint of red and see what that does. Now I'm getting more of a brown color, more of like a light kind of orangey terracotta brown. Okay, so I like what that little touch of red did. I'm going to come over here to my red. I'm going to pick up one more tiny pinpoint. We only add it by tiny little pinpoints. Aha! And look at this pretty brown color I'm going to end up with. I like that. That looks like a nice giraffe brown, doesn't it? It's kind of a kind of a terracotta, rusty brownish, greenish, I mean, orangey brown. There we go. It's kind of an orangey brown, which is a good color for a giraffe. Okay? So I'm going to come up on his horns with my orangey brown I just made. Paint the horns on the top of his head. Paint the, this side of his horn, this side. There we go. Now I need to dip the tip of my bristles. Actually, I'm going to dip my brush in the water. I'm going to bring it over here into my puddle of orange and I'm going to twist my brush like this. I'm going to roll it back and forth because I got a lot of paint on my brush. I want to get some of the paint off my brush, so I'm going to twist it back and forth like this. See, I'm rolling it back and forth. That rolls all that paint off my brush. Dip it one more time. Roll it back and forth right at the edge of your puddle. It gets all that paint rolled off, so I can get my brush back down to a little point here. I'm going to paint the rest of my horns. Now, the top of the horn gets kind of just furry and fuzzy, so I don't have to make it perfect on the top. Um, pick up a little bit more of that brownish orange. Paint the sides of this horn. Paint the top of the horn. Now, I kind of want the horns to blend in a little bit. So, I'm going to come right down here on the top of his head. Remember how we came up above his eye? We went straight up above his eye and curved over. Now, my giraffe's pretty dry. It's not blending in too much, is it? But you know how I can make it blend in? Swish all the paint off your brush. Swish it. 
roll it dry on your paper towel and see how we still have all this light color. This is what we painted the giraffe with. I'm going to come right underneath where I just put my orangey brown and put some of my light color right underneath and brush it up into my orangey brown. My orangey brown is still wet. I just put it on. And by brushing some of my light color back up into it, it blended it and I don't have a line anymore. So now I'm going to take and dump my brush into my orangey brown. One time in the water, one time in the brown. One time in the water, one time in the brown. I'm thinning down part of this orangey brown. One more dip in the water. See how thin I've made it over here? And one more dip in the water. Okay. Then I'm going to take and give myself a little shadow. My paint's really thin. I might pull a little bit more color into my paint there. I'm going to paint a little shadow at the bottom of this mouth. Well, I need a little bit more dark of my color. The shadow's not quite dark enough. There we go. So, I'm going to paint some dark on the bottom of his mouth here. And where I really want it dark is down the middle of his face. line out. There we go. Okay, I want this kind of dark part here. So I'm going to thin some of this darker brown I had. Just a little bit. Add some water to it. There we go. Roll my brush back and forth. Roll my brush back and forth. And I'm going to make a little stripe right up the middle of this guy's face. Now his face is still a little wet, so it's blending in, which is kind of nice. I'm going to blend it right up to the top. And you can keep making this darker and darker if you want. This is probably a good time to try to dry your giraffe a little bit. So we're going to dry it just a little bit. I know we're kind of running over our normal time, but I'm going to dry off my giraffe just a little bit. Ready? kind of dried off a little bit. That'll help us make this shadow a little easier. If I take and thin down some of my dark here, now, I think I'll even go for this really dark right in here. Let's see what, about thinning down this really dark part right in here. Okay. Got to thin down. And then I'm going to paint this right over the top. Kind of lets me see the color underneath, but it lets me put a little darker bit to him. And you know where else I want a little bit of shadow showing? A little bit of shadow under his neck here. Right down here on the bottom side of his neck, he would have a shadow right here, wouldn't he? Where his head's hanging over his neck. I want his neck to feel round, so I'm going to make these, this shadow go round on him. So we're going to paint a little bit of dark right in there. Kind of lets us get, see a difference between where his mouth is and where 
his neck is. And since I just dried it, it's not blending into his neck too much, is it? It's going to take up a little of that creamy color I've still got on my palette here that we painted the background with. I'm going to smudge it in right there on the edges. So it kind of blends it a little bit. Okay, now I kind of see where his head is in front of his neck, right? I can use this really dark brown I got here and make a really dark center to his ears. And how about if we, well, the little longer project today while we're painting, how about if we mix up a really darker brown to make his spots, okay? So remember how we mix the brown? We used a little bit of yellow. I have to scoop some more yellow. I'm gonna make my puddle right here in the middle. We used yellow. So give yourself two scoops of yellow and then just a pinpoint of red, remember? That's gonna make our orange. Okay, so I got orange going here. And then remember what we did next? I'm gonna roll some of that paint off my brush like this. Came over here and we picked up the tiniest little pinpoint of blue. Very, 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 very tiny blue because the blue turns it green right away. And that's when we added a little bit more. Roll all the paint off into your puddle there and pick up one tiny pinpoint of red. And we'll make a nice brown color here. I'm scooping my paint into the center of my puddle while I mix it up. Does that look like good color for spots on a giraffe? Maybe a little bit more red? dark red brown color now it looks awful red it almost looks pink so I might take just a pinpoint of blue maybe not that much put a little blue in there Ooh, that's a nice brown look at that if you got too much blue and it looks too green what do you think you'll add you'll add a little bit more red and a little bit more yellow so I kind of like this color brown. I think that looks like a good giraffe color. And I'm going to use it <clears throat> to make some spots. Giraffe has have big spots on their neck and their body. They have just some very small spots on their cheeks here. They usually don't have spots up on their head. But there's lots of different species of giraffes. We're going to go for making some big spots. And you see how I left a border, an empty border in between them? Think of putting puzzle pieces down, but not hooking them together. So I'm going to start with one big spot. And you can make your spots whatever shape you want. Put your brush down there and just roll it around and get yourself a good shape. I'm going to let it roll right off. Under here is a spot. Okay, and let's roll this spot right off the side over here. Okay, so we got one spot. Now you kind of build your spots next to each other. I want to leave a little gap, right? So I'm going to put a spot that's going to wrap around this one and come up like that. You can make your spots whatever shape you would like. You just want to leave a border in between them all. Okay, so how about, I like these spots that look like they're wrapping around from the other side of the giraffe. So let's go down here and we'll put one that looks like it's coming around from the back of his neck. So I'm going to go right up the side. And then this part of it will look like it's coming up around here, around there, and over here. This is fun. It's like creating your own jigsaw puzzle of parts. Okay, how about maybe we put one on this side like it's wrapping around from the other side of his neck. So let's put one over here. wrap it right along the top of his neck there and that spot would go right off the side over here and I'm gonna go ahead I forgot to paint my side so I'm just gonna paint it with this brown color and it's gonna look like there's a spot 
be to look like it's this spot wrapping around like that. There we go. So I made that spot into a big spot. And I probably have room to do one more spot right here. It looks like his mouth will cover up part of it. So it looks like it's peeking out from behind his mouth there. That's a neat way to also help identify the edge of his mouth here. I can use the negative space of the spot on his neck. Instead of making an outline on his mouth, that spot just outlined the edge of his mouth for us. And we'll put one more spot right in here. This will outline the edge of his cheek. Okay, so we'll let that go right there. And that's all the spots I'm going to put on his neck. I'm going to rinse my brush out because I want to get it down to a little point again. And I'm going to put some little spots on his cheek. Okay, These are really small compared to those. And I'm going to let some of them look like they're coming from the edge of his cheek too. So I'm just going to dip the point of my brush into my puddle of brown. Okay, I'm just going to use a little brown right on the point of my brush. I'm going to make some spots that come right from the side here. I'm just dipping the tip of my brush like this. And I'll make a little spot that comes up here. Just dip the tip of the brush so you only have a little bit on it. Put a and let's keep these spots really, really small. Almost like giving him freckles. Let's put one right in the middle here. And maybe one more over on the side. And maybe one more right in there. So we're going to keep his spots down here on his cheek. I'm only putting a little amount of paint. Put a little spot that comes along the edge of his mouth here. I'm not going to put too many right against those because I don't want it to get confusing. So we'll put a few in the middle of this guy's cheek over here. And let's see, maybe one more, a little bigger over here. What do you think? Kind of doesn't look like he's too even. Let's see. Oh, pretty good. Maybe we'll make this one. Hang on, I gotta pick it up so I can tell where I'm painting. Okay, I'm sorry. There we go. How about enough spots on his cheek? Maybe we'll put a few little tiny ones that come. Over here. Okay, now while we got this really dark brown, I'm going to go ahead and put even a one more coat here in the middle of his ears. Okay. Oops, back. I'm going to put a little dark while we got this dark brown. Sometimes putting an extra coat. on top really makes it show up. So I'm going to put a little extra coat of the dark brown right in the middle of his ears here. Remember how we put a little dark up here? Put a little extra coat in there. And I'm going to put a little extra coat right down here at the bottom of his mouth. I just want a little dark at the bottom edge of his mouth here. I've kind of laid my brush on its side and kind of smushed it right in. If yours isn't smushing in, very technical term, smushing, if it doesn't smush in, I must have had just enough water on my brush that it's smushed and blended. You can always pick up some of that lighter creamy color and put it right on the edge and blend it, okay? So, if you've got some of that lighter creamy color, see we could pick up some of that lighter creamy color and blend it right in. I still had a little of that lighter creamy color on my palette, so I just blended it right in there at the edges. So it blends together. Okay, what's the only thing he's missing now? 
He needs his big black eyes. And if you guys would like, if this paint is nice and dry right here, you can put his eyeballs on with your Sharpie. You can draw this shape. Remember it goes straight across and then curves down, almost like a little quarter circle. So if you would like to put his eyeballs on with your Sharpie, you can do that. Maybe you could outline it with the Sharpie. There's the top of his eye. Then it comes down and curves around. Here's the top of his eye. And it comes down and curves around. About the same size. You want to give them a little top eyelid. So put a copycat line there and put a little copycat line under his eye for his eyelids. Now you could color in his whole eye with your Sharpie if you want, or you can use your black paint. We also want to put his nostrils back on here. Remember, we find the middle of his mouth. And over on one side, we put a curve like that. And on the other side, we put a curve like that and fill in the middle there for his nostril. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead with my black paint and fill in his eye. I'm gonna dip the tip of my bristles in the water. Pick up just a little black, just on the tip. I'm gonna fill in his eye here. And you know what? Giraffes have these very dark brown, blue, black eyes. So I'm going to actually add a little bit of blue too, but I'm going to put the black in here. You can fill it in with your Sharpie if you want. On the outside, we want it to have just the slightest little curve. Almost his eyeball goes almost straight up. It's not like one of those dogs that have bulging eyes, okay? So his eyeball almost goes straight up on the outside. It gets just the littlest curve to it. So fill in his eyeball there. You'll want to let his eyeball get nice and dry and you can use the pinpoint of your brush when it's really clean to put little reflections in his eyes. You don't want to do that while your black is wet. You want to let your black get nice and dry and put the little reflection in. Once you get his eyeball filled in here, you could come back with your Sharpie and give him some nice long eyelashes. They're going to start from down here and they're going to curve up. Nice long eyelashes on the top. And he even gets some shorter little ones on the bottom. Okay, so he's got nice long eyelashes like giraffes do. He's going to get a few more on here. They were really long. There we go. And the last thing he's going to need are the two little white reflections in his eyes. And if you want to give him something to eat. You can mix a green. So you still got a little yellow on your plate. Roll that brush back and forth a little bit. Pick up a little bit of yellow on your plate. Pick up a little bit of blue on the plate. Mix them together and look at that pretty green we get. Oh my gosh, isn't that a pretty green? So roll your brush back and forth. Get all the paint off till you're down to a nice little point again. Dip just the tip of the bristles in the water. Put it in your little green you mixed up. And I'm going to use my pinky to balance. And I'm going to put the little stem right coming into his mouth there. And coming right out the other side. I'm going to pick up a little bit. I'm going to give him all kinds of little leaves. I can just dip just the tip of the bristles in the water. Put it in your puddle of green and just put the brush down, push it down and pull it up. Push it down and pull it up. When it starts running out of paint, just the tip of the bristles in the water. Dip it in your paint. Push it down and pull it up. Down and pull it up. 
and we'll give him some nice little leaves to eat. There we go. And our giraffe is ready to go out in the world. You can sit and play. You can sit and play with your color a little bit more if you've still got some of your light creamy color or if you've got white on your plate and can mix up a little light creamy color you can kind of highlight with a little bit of white creamy on the sides of his nostrils on this inside part that'd be just a little lighter okay so we can give a little highlight there we can give a little highlight if you've mixed up some light color um he gets this little bulge in the top of his forehead right here almost almost like you hit your head and got a goose egg on your head so we can put a little light right in there and then that last thing you want to do is take your brush rinse all the color out roll it back and forth on your towel you get right back down to that nice little point on your brush stick that point straight up and down into the white get a little dot on your brush and put one little dot of white, stick it in, get another dot right underneath that one, stick it in, we're going to put our reflections out here at the side. We'll make a little longer dot for the top one. There we go. And a little short dot underneath. And there we go, our little giraffe is all set. I kind of like my first giraffe, how dark his little forehead was. And if you want to darken, this is where you can really play. You got all the colors on your palette here of what you want to do. You can thin that really dark down a little bit. Give him, if you want to darken up the center of his face a little bit more. I'm going to go right over that little white part I did because I don't really like it. Sometimes when you paint something and then you look at it and you go, eh, well that's what the fun of painting is. You can go back and change it. Yeah, I like my middle dark again. He kind of looks like a cool giraffe. Looks like he could be running out on the plains in Africa. So take some pictures for me. Show me how your drafts turned out. And don't forget to put the lids back on your pots of paint here. You can use your paints. If you still got paints left, you can paint really on anything. You can find a board. You can find a piece of cardboard. Uh, if you have more canvases in your house, you could use those. Uh, you could find all kinds of scraps of things to paint on. So if you still got paints left, and you want to try painting some more, you can paint another giraffe. You can pull the video back up and watch how we draw one. But take some pictures for me. And take some pictures, tag us at Idea Studio, and let me see how your giraffes turned out. And we will see you tomorrow. Bye.